empirical and the molecular formulae. Now, an empirical formula is the formula that indicates the number and types of atoms in a compound in the lowest ratio. A molecular formula, on the other hand, is the formula that indicates the actual number and types of atoms in a molecule. The empirical formula can always be determined from the molecular formula, but the reverse is not possible. Let's say you have a compound that is 54.52% carbon, 9.17% hydrogen, and 36.31% oxygen. We determine the empirical formula. Now, the first step is to assume that you have a 100 gram sample. You can actually assume that you have any mass of a sample, but because percentage means 100, it's easier to use 100 gram sample because the respective percentage can be assumed to reflect the same mass. Consequently, out of the 100 gram sample, 54.52 grams will be carbon, 9.17 grams is hydrogen, and 36.31 grams is oxygen. Next step is to convert the number of grams into moles and we do this using the molar mass. Remember the number of moles is equal to mass over the molar mass. For carbon, we shall have 54.52 divided by 12 the molar mass. That will give us 4.54 moles. For hydrogen, we shall have 9.17 divided by 1, giving us 9.17 moles. For oxygen, we shall have 36.31 over 16, giving us 2.27 moles. So we have this mole ratio for carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. But we cannot write a formula with decimal figures. We must convert them into the simplest whole number ratio. We do this by dividing all the moles by the smallest of them. In this case, it will be 2.27. If we do this, it will give us the ratio of 2 to 4 to 1. This is the simplest possible ratio. And so the empirical formula of the compound is C2H4O. Now what if we were asked to find the molecular formula? Now we cannot do that unless we are given the relative formula mass of the compound. Assuming we are given the relative molecular mass of the compound as 88. It means the total mass of the constituent atoms in the compound add up to 88 in the corresponding ratios. We are given the relative atomic masses of the elements. So we equate the formula to the molar mass. So we shall have C2H4O times N will give us 88. The relative atomic mass of carbon is 12, so we have 12 times 2, plus relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, and we have 4 hydrogen, 1 times 4, plus 16 times n will give us 88. That gives us 44, n is equal to 88, and n is 2. And therefore, the formula will be C2H4O times 2, which becomes C4H8O2. Another example, oxalic acid contains 26.68% carbon, 2.24% hydrogen, and 7.08% oxygen by mass, and has a molecular mass of 90. Give the empirical and the molecular formula. Now, we assume we have a 100 gram sample. We convert the percentages to the corresponding masses. Carbon is 26.68 grams, hydrogen 2.24 grams, and oxygen 71.08. Convert the mass to moles by dividing by the respective relative atomic masses. Carbon 26.68 over 12 will give us 2.22. Hydrogen 
2.24 grams of one will give us 2.24 moles. Oxygen 71.08 divided by 16 will give us 4.4 moles. Now we obtain a whole number ratio for the moles. We divide by the smallest, that is 2.22 moles. So for carbon, 2.22 divided by 2.22 is 1. Oxygen, 2.24 divided by 2.22 is roughly 1. And for oxygen, 4.44 divided by 2.22 is 2. Therefore the empirical formula is CHO2. For the molecular formula, we know that the relative molecular mass is 90. So we have CHO2 times N is 90. 12 plus 1 plus 16 times 2 times N is 90. 45 N is 90 and N is 2. Therefore the molecular formula is C2H2O4. Next item, percention by mass. Now usually, chemical compounds are written using chemical formula. This tells us how many atoms there are of each element. Water is H2O. This means there are two atoms of hydrogen for every atom of oxygen. We can calculate the percentage by mass of each element, hydrogen and oxygen, in a water molecule. To do this, we need to know the atomic mass of each element so we can calculate the total mass of a water molecule. For water, we use the atomic masses of hydrogen and oxygen. Let us calculate the total mass of one mole of a water molecule. There are two hydrogen atoms, each with atomic mass of one gram. So two times one is two. Then we add this to the atomic mass of one oxygen atom, which is 16 grams. So 16 plus 2 is 18 grams. This is the molar mass of water, 18 grams per mole. Now that we know the molar mass of a water molecule, we can work out the percentage by mass of hydrogen and the percentage mass of oxygen. Percentage means out of 100. So we use the formula, mass percentage is equal to mass of the element present in one mole of a compound divided by mass of one mole of that compound times 100. Let's start with hydrogen. The mass of hydrogen present was 2 grams. If you divide that by 18 and multiply by 100, we get the percentage mass of hydrogen present in water. That is 11.1%. And you can work out the same for oxygen, but it's not necessary because the remaining percentage is actually that of oxygen. So we do 100 minus 11.1, giving us 88.9. Next, concentration of solutions. Now, the concentration of a solution is a measure of the number of particles of a solute, a dissolvable solid, which are in a solvent, a dissolving liquid. How would you compare the number of particles in a concentrated solution to a dilute solution? The number of particles in a concentrated solution is greater than the number of particles found in a dilute solution. Think about sweetening a drink by adding sugar. The more sugar you add, the sweeter the drink tastes. Concentration can be given using two units and accompanying formula triangles. The first formula for calculating concentration is moles of solute per unit volume of the solution. Here we divide moles over volume. Here is the formula triangle. Most of the times, volumes are measured in cubic centimeters. 
a thousand cubic centimeters is equal to one cubic decimeter, which is equal to one liter. So how many cubic decimeters is 500 cubic centimeters? To get the answer, we divide 500 cubic centimeters by a thousand cubic centimeters. So 500 cubic centimeters is the same as 0 0.5 cubic decimeters. You can find any of these quantities by covering the one you are looking for. For example, to find moles, you multiply concentration by volume. To find concentration, you divide number of moles by the volume. If you have two moles of salt and dissolve in two liters of water, we can calculate the concentration of the solution. Two moles divided by two liters will give us one mole per liter or one mole per cubic decimeter. The second way of representing concentration is very similar except that we use mass of the substance per unit volume. The formula is mass of a volume and has units grams per cubic decimeters. The formula triangle is the same. For example, if you want to make a solution of 10 grams per cubic decimeter with a volume of 250 cubic centimeters, what mass of salt will you need to dissolve? The first thing to do is convert 250 cubic centimeters into cubic decimeters. How? By dividing by a thousand. So 250 over a thousand gives us 0 0.25 cubic decimeters. 10 grams per cubic decimeter means 10 grams are contained in one cubic decimeter. But we have 0 0.25 cubic decimeters. How many grams? We have 10 grams times 0 0.25 cubic decimeters over one cubic decimeter. Cubic decimeters cancel out and we remain with 2.5 grams. That is the mass of salt that you need to dissolve in 250 cubic centimeters to make a solution with a concentration of 10 grams per cubic decimeter.